Welcome to On The Line. I'm Christine Williams. Coming up for discussion on our Viewpoints panel, the overhauling of the Safe Schools Act deemed to be biased against black students. Later on, you'll be meeting a former contestant of The Bachelorette. Stay tuned. And these are the issues we'll be presenting today to our Viewpoints guests for commentary. The overhauling of the Ontario Safe School Act, known for its zero tolerance policy against violence. It was deemed biased against black students. The cost of our soldiers' lives in Afghanistan. How has this grim news impacted our views about the mission as well as our image? And the sad case of three university lacrosse players in North Carolina wrongly accused of sex assault. What would justice dictate now? Later on, you'll be meeting a former contestant of The Bachelorette. But first, let's meet our Viewpoints guests. John Thompson is president of the McKenzie Institute. And Paul McKeever is the leader of the Freedom Party. Thank you both so much for joining me today. Thank Thanks you for inviting now, the first case we're talking about, in fact, the first newspaper article, it concerns the overhauling of the Safe Schools Act. Now, there's been a lot of debate behind this. It, basically, what it fosters is a whole zero-tolerance policy when it comes to violence. And as you can see from that headline, it's now being deemed a kinder, gentler Safe Schools Act. The essence of this article here, it says below that larger headline, special needs students suspended more often. Now, in the article, it identifies the black students, saying that, well, they're the ones being suspended most often. And I know that certain members of the NDP party said, basically, what the, the Safe Schools Act amounts to is a gang recruitment act. Nothing to do with these students once they're expelled, so they go into society and they make more trouble. The other side of the argument says, well, why throw out the baby with the bathwater? two sides to this and I, I'm, I'm going to start with you John and, and hear what you, what you think about this. Do you think it was time to make it a gentler act according to the article? Well the problem is this is really tricky ground. Very much. Um, because let's remember the other side of things. The other students who are now who are now being protected from disruption. In other words the quiet students who stay in class and don't have to worry about his, constant problems but yes I can accept the point about gang recruitment I can also accept the point that well someone will probably issue the old racism button and hit that again and I'm surprised it still works but there are communities with more family problems than others you know it's mm -hmm. often a consequence of uh, immigration or lack of integration it mm -hmm. changes in time but right now the fact that there are going to be some minorities where there's more troubled or disproportionate number of troubled uh, mm -hmm youth than in other cases. Okay, now what do you think of this? Well, to my mind, uh, mm -hmm. the application of justice should know no face color or anything else. Uh, it's just about people. So if uh, a, a group uh, defined by, you know, some genetic trait is for some reason more statistically getting, uh, getting uh, affected by the act more than other times, well, that's just the berries. Uh, that's not something that we have to say, well, let's go lighter on in a given constituency because of their race, color, creed, etc. Well, well, to me, this whole racial argument could end up really backfiring in the end because what are you suggesting here by saying it unfairly targets the black community? What you're basically saying on the other hand is that you've identified the black community as being a problem. You've actually put them in that category what? of troublemaking. So why not just look at the whole school the issue of violence as a whole and try to find some system of dealing with it as opposed to perhaps putting other children at risk. Now let's just be careful here when mm -hmm. we talk about a black community what black community? Yes. I yes. mean and be, that's what's identified in be, these articles. Yeah, there'll be mm -hmm. kids there from uh, from Caribbean islands that are perfectly quiet and stable. They're good, hard you know, students. There'll be students from other backgrounds that are going to be troublesome. That's just the way they are. And yes, it, if you say they're all the, the same group mm -hmm. just because of their skin pigmentation, you're... To me, it's worse. You're wrong. But the to other thing worse. is also special needs. If you start identifying these kids as being special needs, and saying, okay, well now we've got to protect them. You're actually sort of encouraging this behavior, mm, giving you permission. I mean, mm -hmm. the real philosophical question here 
is when you've got trouble, I mean, do you tear a bandage off slowly or quickly? You know, do you do mm -hmm. what you have to do? And, and then hopefully with it, people from that particular narrow group will realize they've got to smarten up, as has often been described to them by, told to them by their own leaders. Uh, or, you know, will they say it's someone else's fault, it's the system's fault, we're being victimized, and then perpetuate the trouble that, you know, we see already. Mm -hmm. Good point. Paul. Uh, yeah, you know, I, I'm not big on the idea of any uh, community being defined by race, creed, color, etc. To my mind, there's one society full of human individuals and that's it. And when people start pulling out the this community and that community, mm -hmm. they're really breaking up, balkanizing society, and I don't think it's productive at all. Well, but see, it ends up being used oh, for yes. a political advantage. This is what I'm seeing here, because on one hand, when the black community is identified in terms of crime, it's called racial profiling. When it's identified in the case of, well, the Safe Schools Act, it's identified here as, well, we're looking out for your interests. So from the point of view of always identifying, if you find that statistically, there's some kind of a distribution along one line or another. How about dealing with that problem and trying to identify what the problem is as opposed to trying to alter a whole act yeah, based on it? I mean, that's my concern that's about true. the issue and, here. and if you look at the Education Act, which is the, what the Safe Schools Act modified, uh, it, we're talking here, when we talk about suspensions and expulsions, we're talking about things that are under the criminal code are either lesser offenses or greater offenses. We're talking about carrying guns to school, alcohol, distributing alcohol to minors. Yes. We're talking, talking about uh, being drunk at school. We're, we're talking about violence. We're talking about rape. These are the things identified as the, as the uh, issues under which a person has to be expelled. We're not talking about being unkind. We're talking mm -hmm. about criminal offenses. That's when these suspensions and expulsions are supposed to occur. So I don't want to see any of that modified. I, I don't want crime mm -hmm. going on in my schools. And I think we have to remember that the purpose of a school, I mean, a school is like a garden. Yes. And that the children's minds are, th are these flowers. We're trying to have them bloom. And if someone chooses to be a weed, we don't ask, well, why are you a weed? Or can we turn a weed into a, a flower? We say, pluck the weed mm -hmm. and take care, take the weed and somewhere take care else. Of the weed. Well, take care of the weed elsewhere. One point that was made in this article, and this was the suggestion with the new Kinder Act, have one kind of expulsion done by the board for at least 21 days with alternative programs that must be completed before return to school. I mean, I applaud that, but why not have that tagged on to the Safe Schools Act as opposed to talk about changes to the Safe Schools Act and then add that on? Right. Again, you're looking at a situation here of throwing away the baby with the bathwater. What do you think? Well, there will be all sorts of perspectives, all sorts of agendas and hidden agendas, all trying to change what, which is cur what is currently in place. Again, a suggestion like this makes a great deal of sense. You know, take all the troublemakers, put them into some other place and say, okay, mm -hmm. you know, you're going to clean your act up, you're going to behave yourself, and then you can go back into normal schools along with everybody else. Anything else is going to be special pleading by one group or another, and it's only going to be self-defeating in the long run. Hmm. Yeah, and let's yes. not forget the why we're in this situation. Mm -hmm. we've, we've forced everybody through tax, property taxes. If you want to live anywhere, you have to pay property taxes hmm. so that they can have a public school. These, these are, these are in, a, in a sense, prisons that we've, we make with tax dollars, and you have to go there, and nobody can afford, few people can afford to pay the bail to get their kids out when one of the inmates decides to get violent. That's the problem, mm -hmm. and I think the focus mm -hmm. has to be on saying, look, you don't have to be here if you don't want to. You, don't, you can take your money and expend it in the school where they don't allow violence to occur. But as soon as you say everybody has to pay in, then you've got a special situation where, you know, some people are unfortunately in a situation where their children are violent, but they're still paying for that school. Hmm. And so there's some injustice in saying, take them out if you're still, still paying for that school. The argument for that is always the universality of education. We yeah. see it in the medical system as well. How would you argue that? Now, I have to ask you that quickly because we're going to yeah. have to move on to the I'm second a, I'm topic. I'm opposed Paul. to tax-funded schooling, period. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the idea is that you should be paying only the school that your child attends and not the school that uh, some state thinks that it wants you to su mm -hmm. support. Yes. And that, that, would, that would clear up all of this mess, frankly, because no school uh, would manage to keep hmm. dollars when they had violence in the school. Wow. Okay. And we're going to go for a break now when we come back. While we all know the situation going on in Afghanistan, we'll be discussing two sides, two schools of thought after this. Stay tuned.